good morning. Um, as you just heard, uh, I'm a civil servant. I'm, I work in the government. Uh, my boss is the permanent secretary. So whatever you will hear today is possible in government because we do this every day. Yesterday we had a meeting about, oh, so there was the conference, and then we had a meeting where we learned about the, um, the, 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 the province uh, project of building the future. And it's a very ambitious, very bold um, uh, project. And it also calls for more, uh, more people working with these projects than just participation and just uh, your traditional civil servants in an ordinary way. And that's why I'm going to share with you today how we in MindLab work with uh, the cultural change of government while, do, while doing projects. So, MindLab is the first uh, policy lab in the world. Um, we're based in, in Copenhagen, Denmark. We are, um, we are hired by and live in the Ministry of Business, Industry, and Financial Affairs. We work with additional ministries. Um, and we are in our third generation. So the first generation was about ideation. This is 20, 2002. This is where uh, you could come down to MindLab and you could take off your jacket and loosen your time, roll up your sleeves, and then you could do crazy stuff like brainstorming, like putting posters all over the walls. We actually had um, a whiteboard egg, like an entire, it was an egg, a room of a whiteboard that was round on the floor and the ceiling all the way around, and you could enter that, and then you can do crazy brainstorming on the walls. That was the idea of innovation in government in 2002, and it's not that I'm saying it's a stupid idea, it was just, it was what was possible at that point within government. Then in 2007, uh, there was a change of director, uh, but also an addition to the strategy or the way or the approach of MindLab. So still, it's not that ideation or creativity as a sport or innovation as a sport of creativity. It's, it's not that it's not part of the process that we work with, but now we were more concerned about what about the end users? What about the citizens, the businesses, the organizations that are the end users, the consumers of our policies, regulations, and services? What about these people? Shouldn't we learn about these people before we actually build policies, before we build regulations? So we did a shift in 2007, becoming much more user-oriented, so it would be like user-centered innovation. We brought in design thinking, uh, the, process of, uh, the process and the model that promises an output in the end if you just do ideation, like research ideation, conceptualization, and then product and the follow-up. Um, and what we did was that we were next to civil servants, like next to government. So we did work on our own, we did research, we did conceptualization, and then we promoted it into the organizations as something that they could embed as policies or regulations or services. The thing about that one is that it's also saying what you're doing today is not good enough, and you don't have the capacity or the capabilities to actually doing right. So you need an innovation unit that's capable of doing it for you. It was a very uh, non-humble approach uh, to working with government and working with our colleagues, the civil servants. And also what I think we saw a lot of was what I call lost in transaction. So when you've done something and you hand it over for someone to implement, the legitimacy and the ownership is not there. So why implement it? Because it's not your ideas, it's not your thoughts. It's not something that you will get credit for eventually at the end. So you rather go with what you come up with yourself. So in 2015 when I came in, building and standing on the shoulders of the first two mind labs, we did a strategy shift. And the shift was about uh, dissemination, 
uh, of what we do and also showing what's possible within the public sector, but always hand in hand with our colleagues, the traditional serv uh, civil servants of the ministries that we work with. Now it was about culture and leadership. It's still about innovation, but it's about cultural leadership to bring that in to the, to the mindset of the managers, of the leaders, and to the civil servants. So it's not the 20 people of MindLab that are the lab, it's the entire ministries that we work with. And it's every civil servant in the ministries that we work with that needs to be capable of, as a capacity, to work uh, innovative, but most of all, to have the mindset, the understanding of what does it really take to work with innovation within government. So the ambition of MindLab, the third generation of MindLab, is that we want to pioneer and nurture possible futures of public sector. When you work in public sector, you would hear all the time that this is not possible, we've done this before, it can't be done, we're a political organization, it's truly impossible, that would never work, you know, we have to look out for the politicians or the citizens, stuff like that. There's a lot of things that's impossible in the public sector. So what we set out to do is not being a think tank, but be more of a do tank, um, showing what's truly possible within the public sector. And by that we mean when we work with projects, we try to build projects or the process of the projects in a way that's not been done before. I'm going to show you some examples afterwards. And we do it not just isolated in MindLab, it's not that we have a specific, beautiful room, uh, we, we actually have, but it's not in the room that this happens. It's in the organizations that we work with, and it's with the people, Ooh. and it's with the people, the civil servants that we work with. They should be capable, the organization in itself should be capable of working with innovation. And by having all these ways of showing what's possible. We believe that we can inspire people to do different, but we can also prove that it's possible to do different. So the, the cultural antibody of the organization can be proven wrong. So, MindLab is about innovation, but it's even more about to push a new way of working, a cultural push into the organization. And we have three ways that we work so far. So one of them is, is our projects. Uh, I think projects is about 75% of what we do. And when we mean projects, it can be projects that are five weeks, it can be projects that are five months or even more than a year. And the projects would always be strategic political problems that ties to the ministries that we work with, that is owned by the ministries that we work with, and owned by the civil servants that we work with. We don't have any projects in MindLab. We facilitate our partner organization, our colleagues' projects. The reason for this is that we don't carry the expertise of the policy domain that they work in. So we work with um, employment, Ministry of Employment. We know a bit about employment politics, but we are not experts. We know a bit about education. We work with the Ministry of Education, but we are not experts. We know something about business politics, but we are not the experts. We are experts in social science like um, uh, qualitative research. We have anthropologists, we have sociologists. We are experts in design thinking. We have a lot of designers, we have engineers, we have people that are skilled in narrative communication. This is our domain of expertise. And our domain of operation is facilitation. It's not the projects. 
The project is owned and driven by and also implemented by, and especially the last one is very important, by the, our colleagues, the traditional civil servants. Why it's very important that they implement stuff is that they also have the expertise and the political resilience, the hierarchical resilience to actually overcome all the barriers of implementation. But we help them to build a very strong value proposition, a strong argument for whatever we come up with. And we help them by bringing in end user perspective, not as a report, but actually by taking them in the hand bringing them out into the field. So when the Ministry of Education, they are working with education, it's not desk research, it's not looking into the data, it's about going out to a school, not meeting citizens or end users, it's meeting parents, it's meeting students, it's meeting the, the school leader, it's meeting the teachers, and it's having conversation with these people that give you the perspective so you know that you are solving not just a symptom, but a real problem. As one of our former colleagues used to say that you, if you don't do this, you would end up building the perfect solution for the wrong problem. So actually figuring out what the real problem is, is a lot of th has a lot of things to do with what we do. But when we work with these projects, so that will be the traditional mind lab way of working, but what we also do now is that we look for every, in every project we look for an experiment. Something that we can do that introduces a new way of working in government. It can be policy design in 10 days, that was kind of believed to be impossible, we did so. It can be getting a deep understanding of a problem by doing uh, design anthropology in three days, that was believed impossible, we did that. So for everything we do, we try to put in a mind lab layer, not just solving the problem, but also putting in a new way of working. Prototyping, can you prototype a policy? Yes. Can you prototype a service? Yes. Also, when your government, when you're in the Constitution, says that you have to treat everyone equal, yes. So you have to prove these along the way. So every project in MindLab is a petri dish for experimenting with problem framing, problem solving, and to prove impossible wrong. We need these lighthouses for us to point to and say, you might think this is not possible, but we actually did this, 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 and this. And it's not because we are mind lab or have a specific skill. It was actually the organization itself that did it. It's not us. It's, it's traditional civil servants that did it. That's why it can never be a mind lab project. The other one is we have something that we call lab rats. And Lab Rats is a very good example on how we work. We didn't really have any idea if it would work, how it would work, who should be part of the Lab Rats, or how we should facilitate them. But we believe that there was an idea about people in the public sector, in the organizations that we work with, that are already maybe not skilled but you can teach everyone to do a brainstorm. You can teach everyone to do research. But what these people had was they were carrying an ambition on behalf of citizens, businesses in Denmark. They wanted to be an ambitious public sector. These brave civil servant, they wanted to revolutionize the way that the public sector work. Normally, they have just been hired. They are still blind to the antibody of the organization. They think that the culture can change. We think so as well. But eventually you'd see these people assimilate or disappear. They leave. So we thought if we can build a network around these people, we can keep them a bit longer and we can help them to do small changes in their everyday life. The idea was that there are probably hundreds of civil servants 
asking on a daily basis, what if? What if I can do this? What if I could just, instead of going through the traditional hierarchy, approach the minister directly? You know, just to learn what are the political intent in this case that I'm working on. What if, what if? And we, we thought maybe if we can build a network around this and we can facilitate their what if questions, we can make small experiments that prove maybe impossible wrong, but also just maybe just bring learning to why is it not possible and what can we do about it. So these lab rats are now facilitated by MindLab. But again, it's, it's not our network, it's their network. We just try and facilitate that in their everyday life they can do these small experiments in order to see whether or not we can change the public sector from within. So the mind labs is, oh, sorry, the lab rats are in a way our bottom-up approach. This is where we squeeze the organization from the bottom. Yes, you need like from the top, you need like a some sort of mandate. And we have the mandate because we exist at Spine Lab, but we actually never asked if we could do the lab rats. We just did the lab rats. And we actually then after that told the the permanent secretaries that we have uh, executed their wish of having lab rats. They never wished for lab rats, but we just did that in order to get it up and running. So now the legitimacy is there. Now it's been running for a year, and it's actually in its, in its own way in a second or even maybe in a third generation, because this is also an experiment where we try continuously to figure out how can we make this work in the best possible way. So that's changing the public sector from, from the bottom. The last project I would like to, to share, or the, 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 the last way of, of working with cultural push, is the Project X. And Project X is um, it's more of an umbrella for a range of projects. And the projects are defined by, um, we call them uh, organizational interventions. So it's something that we install in the organization. It's, I don't think there's a lot of other people trying to push culture in this way. Um, but the idea is that, so culture is a bit fluffy. But to make it even more tangible, we are working with behaviors, so what are the habits of the organization, what are the uh, vocabulary, how do we speak about things, are we using words as agile, failure, innovation, uh, social research, anthropology, end users, uh, problem reframing, are all these words that we hear among our colleagues. And the last thing that we work with are the artifacts, the physical representation of a culture within the environment. And the egg, as I was sharing with you in the beginning, that whiteboard, crazy uh, brainstorming room that you could enter and write all over the place. That's a crazy artifact for innovation as a creativity sport as ideation. It's an ideation artifact. Post-its is an ideation artifact. So the idea about Project X is that if we can change, if we can instill other artifacts, another vocabulary, another behavior, then eventually, hopefully, it's it's not an idea because we are working on it as it is right now, but the idea is that you would see cultural change. And the only thing that we can do to actually measure whether or not it works is actually to look for these three things. As signs of success for Project X, do we see different artifacts with our colleagues? Do we, do we hear a different vocabulary? Do we see different behaviors? 
And just to give you a very, very concrete example, um, um, do you have advent calendars in Spain? Like for Christmas? Is that, is that a very silent yes? Yes and no. Okay, some of you have, apparently. <clears throat> okay, the idea of an advent calendar is that you have um, something like this. It can, behind every door, there can be a small picture that uh, shows something uh, about Christmas. You can also have candy, chocolate. And the idea is that if you're a kid or a childish adult, you have one of these and then, or several, and then every day you open one during the entire, De not the entire of December, but until Christmas Eve. So first of December, door number one, second of December, door number two. So in last year, was it last year? So last year, during Christmas, during December, um, we wanted to, let me go back a bit. The, the Ministry of Business, Industry, Business, and Financial Affairs, they had just released a strategy of where should the ministry be in 2025. And uh, in that strategy, it said we need to be a competent, relevant uh, ministry for citizens and businesses. And since in the world you see a change in the nature of change that is remarkable, you know, now change is faster than ever and it's more complex than ever. And as a ministry, we need to be capable of working in this ecosystem or in this, um, in a society that has these uh, disruption or the, uh, like a disruption nature or a very fast paced and complex uh, behavioral change, uh, not behavioral change, but change that's also global. One of the reasons why it's actually got in that strategy is because we put it in because we thought it could leverage the idea of what we were trying to do to build an agile organization. So we put in actually this. And then we wrote that one of the capabilities that you should have as a ministry or a civil servant is the ability of being agile. And when we started asking people, so we went to the, uh, the managers, and then we said, okay, in the strategy 2025, it says that we need to be agile. And what is it that you are specifically looking for with your employees when you look for agile? They didn't know. Nobody know what agile is. Nobody know what being innovative is. We know the word, we know it's about value creation, or agile is about being, um, having, like being very responsive on what you are, um, what you, meet, mostly in a physical way, but what does it mean in an organizational way? If you ask your employees to be agile, they would go, okay, but they don't know how. So what we wanted to do, if you want to build an, an agile culture, we would then look at what are the behaviors that we need to see in the organization, and what could we instill or install of uh, artifacts, and how can we make not just the word agile be part of the vocabulary, but also the, the, the more defining behavioral vocabulary to be part of the, of the wording or the vocabulary of the ministry. So we did this. And behind every door, you will find a very specific challenge of the day, something that you can pull off in five minutes, there were different versions, so, and everyone in the ministry got one of these. So, first of December, people come to work, one, of, one for each person in the ministry. And there were different versions, so they didn't have to do the same, all of them, the same day. But behind every door, there was a very tangible, it didn't say agile. It just, it just mimicked what would be at least part of a behavior 
that accumulated over the month of December would mimic an agile behavior. Also bringing in other words, another vocabulary than just agile. And then we actually, we, um, for the Christmas party, we had an award show. So people that was the most agile people, they got awards. Um, and the funny thing is that it's almost been a year, and now you hear the word agile all the time. You see people behave differently. But what you also see is a tremendous courage from the permanent secretary, inspired by maybe not the calendar, but the idea of being agile, and now also understand what does that mean. So Lars and I was actually invited into changing the whole process, the strategy process of how the ministry um, uh, defines its portfolio for the coming year. So we had something that we called the, the business angels of the ministry that were the directors across the ministry, all the agencies to look into all the projects, giving feedback, having pitches from the, the, the civil servants that are promoting ideas, giving feedback, and then rating and, and, and trying to figure out what should we put in the portfolio for next year. That's a very different way of working within the ministry. He totally gave up control, and he, he handed out and distributed the, uh, um, the decision to his directors and to the process that we facilitated, not knowing what would his ministry do next year. And all this, I believe, resembles that you can actually, by example, by doing, not, not lip servicing a cultural change, but actually just by by example, show that you, can, that you can work differently within government. And the capabilities that we have as MindLab is to ensure, and we had this discussion last night, is that it would never be a failure because we are there to pick you up and ensure because every civil servant need to provide something in a project. And we are there to pick you up, so even though when it's, you know, at the darkest moments of your process, when you truly believe you're falling, we are there with our expertise to ensure that you will get there. Maybe not as beautifully as we have imagined, and maybe not as valuable as we had hoped for, but you will not fail. And this is super important. I know that we love to talk about failure, and I also love to talk about failure. But the idea is that when you work in, in public sector, failure is not really an option. But you can stumble all the way to success. And I think in that sense, I would like to share with you uh, in a brief moment, and this is like a for the, the people with the, the technique. So I'll just say something and then I need to show you a video. So um, after I started working in MindLab three years ago, uh, it occurred to me that um, something from my private life were now a very profound part of my professional life. Um, so I ride skateboards. And, um, and what's interesting about and, and how it corresponds to innovation, not just the public sector, but innovation in general, is that when you, when you ride skateboard, you look at, the, you look at the, the, the urban environment in a different way. Uh, you would probably see a bench, you know, designed for sitting down and reading a book or have a coffee, I see something different. I see something that you can skate in different ways. So 
I don't see stuff as they, were, as they were designed to be used. I see them differently. And it's the same when we work with the public sector or in, with innovation. Because you have a lot, actually what we do a lot in the public sector is not, it's not a totally new, uh, mind-blowing, disruptive idea. It's actually working with something that's already there that you need to look at in a different way and then figuring out how can you improve that so it will be valuable and relevant for the citizens and the businesses while still containing the political intent because we serve politicians. And then it kind of struck me that maybe what you want to see, so when we talk about the you know, the cultural change or the, the new public servant, you know, what is it that we really want? Is it a group of skateboarders? Uh, and I think maybe it is. And just to give you an example of what skateboarding is capable of, I hope that we can see a video. And we will just need to see just the beginning of it. Just this. That's truly not a skateboarder. Uh, oh, that's a skateboarder. Yeah, different, different video, perhaps? Well, in a second, when it, when it, when it runs, uh, not to interrupt the video, I'll just let you know it's not me on the video. Um, there it is. Pause it. Perfect. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail because I'm also running out of time. But I'm not going to go into detail what he just did. But that was super difficult. Super, super difficult. Uh, it's also extremely creative. And I think that most of the people, first of all, he sees this. Um, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a water channel or something. And he sees this and he believes that he can skate it. Then he thinks, I'm not just going to skate it. I'm going to change uh, skateboards along the way. And I will also stand on one foot while grinding you know, the gap. Grinding is you know, that part where he's just grinding. Extremely difficult. I would say most of the people would also believe that would be impossible. But the thing is, and I believe this is something that we need to find in civil servants, is he is truly passionate about what he does. He's extremely courageous. And he's not really taking in any of the cultural antibody or the perception of that it's impossible. He's actually just going for it. And I think we need that. But the thing is, when we ask for this, we also ask for this, and can we see the rest of the video? Try. Here it is, next try. I'm sick of fucking just doing this, guys. That's it, I found it. That was it. I found it.
So I think in an essence, this is what we do in MindLab. It's, it's not about failure, it's about seeing something, dreaming of the impossible to come true, and then step by step getting there. Um, the thing is, I think it's about 17 tries, but they're not stupid tries. For every try, he, he adjusts, I don't know, five muscles or the speed or the stance or the height of the yali. He shifts his weight. There's a lot of changes. There's specifically two points in the video. It's, it's two points saying the same and then there's a third one. But there's two things in the video I truly love. And it's that twice... He says, that's it, last fucking try. And then he just continues and continues and continues. And the other one is that after 17 tries, adjusting muscles, speed, uh, height, um, shifting weight, the balance, all these small, 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 small adjustments not trying to figure it out before he tries to do the trick, but while doing the trick. And eventually, his like body, uh, the muscle memory, the physical memory, now knows what to do. Now we know what to do, and then he can do it. And he actually calls it. He says, now I'm capable of doing it. And I think this is what we need in, this, uh, in the public sector. A lot of skateboarders with the resilience to be able to do these kind of things. Thank you.